Bienvenue to Welcome to Reporters here on France 24. I'm Mark Owen. A $2.4 billion project has been met with angry opposition from environmental campaigners in Serbia. The mining giant Rio Tinto wants to extract lithium. Local people fear the creation of a thousand jobs as part of the mining process could lead to huge damage to the landscape and to the water supply. Laura Rui is our reporter. Laura, it seems that the popular mobilization against this project has, for now, worked. Well, the point is that there is a fierce opposition against this project. And apparently, I mean, I think these were the words of the prime minister a couple of uh, days ago. I mean, she said that the project is being halted because uh, the demands of the demonstrators, the uh, envir environmental uh, demonstrators, were to stop the project. But on the other hand, uh, one can see on the field that Rio Tinto's activities are going on. So that's the reason why the protesters do not believe the uh, government's word and think that, in fact, this is just a trick ahead of the general election in uh, April uh, to uh, remove uh, dem demonstrations from the streets. Laurent Rui, thank you very much indeed. Let's take a look then at his report. A one-way ticket to Australia for Rio Tinto. Serbia's environmental organizations want to give it to the multinational giant and its lithium mining project in the country's west. Suddenly, after five months of protests, Belgrade has announced the project will be scrapped. But the environmentalists are skeptical. We want a law banning boron and lithium exploitation because lithium mining is not just a problem for the Yadar Valley, it risks an environmental catastrophe. If we protect the Yadar Valley, we will protect all of Serbia. The protests are organised by NGO Go Change with Savo Manojlovic at its helm. This 36-year-old lawyer believes the lithium mining project must be fought in the field of legislation. Go Change activists say the cancellation of Rio Tinto's permits may be a political manoeuvre for the government to lower the unpopular project's profile ahead of the general elections. Manojlovic believes that only legislation can guarantee a halt to lithium mining. We're asking for a minimum 20-year moratorium on boron and lithium mining and exploration. We don't trust our politicians, who've been behaving as if they represent Rio Tinto rather than the Serbian people. There's nothing to guarantee they will keep their word after the elections. The story begins in 2004 with the discovery of jadarite in western Serbia's Yada Valley. Rio Tinto say the mineral, found nowhere else in the world, contains enough lithium to meet 10% of the world demand for electric car batteries, as well as boron, which is used in detergent production. The Anglo-Australian company has promised a $2.4 billion project that would make Serbia Europe's leading lithium producer. Right in the middle of the Jadarite deposit is the village of Gornja Nedeljica and its 1,000 residents. This rural area and its pristine wildlife are not the place for a mining project, say locals. Farmers Latko Kokanovic's land would be swallowed by a mine he wishes he'd never heard of. Today, he's meeting Mariana Petkovic, president of the local anti-mining group. We are ordinary people. We've never dealt with either mining or politics. And now we are threatened by a large company. It all started back in July 2020, when Rio Tinto laid out their plans in detail. In the beginning, if they were to be believed, it would have all been perfect. The mine was supposed to cover 20 or 30 hectares. And then the project grew and we would have to give up our land so they could build a plant, a tailings dump. That's when we started to fight the best way we could. You see, this is our village. It's small but modern. We've built it with our own hands. 
here's the school, which has 240 students. This is a post office, and over there, that's the health center. And here, this is Rio Tinto. The Rio Tinto project covers 600 hectares in three parcels, with a mine shaft 700 meters deep. The multinational is buying up any property it can, fields, forests, and houses. This is the access area for the mine shaft. These were the first houses targeted by Rio Tinto. It's here that the problematic acquisitions began in November 2020. Look at it, roofs dismantled, houses in ruins. And they stay here like this, upsetting us whenever we see them. They remind us of a war, the bombing, and everything that they brought down on people's heads. Tonight, the Anti-Lithium Association has called a meeting at Zlatko's farm. They're trying to dissuade the villagers from selling, and it's paid off. Despite making lucrative offers, Rio Tinto is now struggling to buy new properties. Village mayor Dragan Karajic is here too. His fields have already been contaminated by Rio Tinto's exploratory work. Now, the locals are planning a new protest, blocking the border crossing to neighboring Bosnia. We have to go there with as many vehicles as possible and with our wives and children. Everyone who can should come to show how serious we are and that we will not give up. We're on the way to Dragon's farm. If the mine goes ahead, he will lose both his land and his home. Rio Tinto has already despoiled his fields. These are the drill holes. Nothing grows around the drill holes anymore, not even ragweed, which will usually grow on asphalt or on concrete, but not there. Every two months or so, they replace the tubes, repaint the covers, and they lay new screed, because the high concentration of arsenic, boron, and I don't know what else, other poisons, corrodes the concrete. They replace the soil around the holes too. It's all cosmetic. There are more than 600 drill holes in the field around here. These are the deepest. They go down to 700 meters. Look, here's my field. Over there, that clump of trees, is the Korenita River. And on the other side, next to the corn, is the Yadar River. Between the two rivers, they're planning a tailing dump two kilometers from bridge to bridge, two kilometers wide and 500 meters towards the road there, and 60 meters high. It's an absolute catastrophe, a catastrophe announced in advance. The flash protest at the Bosnian border brought residents from all over the region, along with activists from elsewhere in Serbia. The police were nowhere in sight. The protesters blocked border traffic for two hours, hoping their demands would be heard. The border blockade has been a success. Everything is okay. It was a peaceful protest. There were some families with young children and a man with a sick wife. We let them through right away. The protests have shown there is nationwide concern. There are plenty of precedents for pollution in Serbia, as seen in the destruction of ecosystems and the emergence of malignant diseases. Chemist Dragana Djordjevic from Belgrade University says the mining method itself is dangerous. There's nothing new in this technology since the late 19th or early 20th century chemistry. 
You extract the ore, grind it to dust, and treat it with various acids. This expels a lot of residue and contaminated water. The operator takes the mineral he's interested in and exports it, while the tailings are left on the site, a burden to the local population. But when they leave, when they close the mine, the residues will continue to be leached by rainwater, and there'll be no one left to treat them. And that's when the catastrophe will hit the region. The ecological protesters aren't going to give up. There are other mining projects in development in the region. The environmental threat looms ever larger. The exploration and extraction of lithium and boron must be banned. That's our final demand, and we're calling on the people to demonstrate outside the presidency tomorrow until our demand is met. Support is flooding in at Go Change. Belgrader Marina Pavlic is a leading environmental activist who rose to prominence in a campaign against air pollution. These are kits for our new members. Some of them wanted to step up and help us enlist new supporters. We named them as coordinators, and we now have these in more than 20 cities in Serbia. The government announcement was needed, but it's not enough. As long as we don't completely stop lithium-related mining activity, not a single region in Serbia will be safe. So we haven't won yet. This is a big step, but it's not over. <laughs> Salvo, can you take the stickers? Now there's another protest in Belgrade. The Nedelica villagers are here too. They want to use environmental support to force the government into banning lithium mining in Serbia before the April elections. Rio Tinto just bought another seven properties. Even with their permits cancelled, they're still working. This shows how little you should trust the government's promises. If Rio Tinto is really being expelled, this must be written into the law. If it is not, Rio Tinto could return either to the Yadar Valley or somewhere else. And whatever happens to Rio Tinto and the Yadar must be enforced for any company and for all of Serbia. The battle between the government and the advocates of a less polluted Serbia will be a long one. The protesters say Rio Tinto has not abandoned their project and that the government's word is worthless. With elections approaching in April, they say they're ready to radicalize but it's too early to say who will win. And our reporter, Lauren Rui, is still with us. Lauren, thanks for that uh, insight into what's happening in your uh, corner of Europe there. Um, I'm wondering, on the back of what we've just seen, what's at stake for the company Rio Tinto? What's at stake for the Serbian government? Well, uh, according to Rio Tinto's version, I mean, this is a project that is worth $2.4 billion. Uh, they say that uh, in Serbia lay about 10% of the uh, world uh, reserves of lithium, which uh, the uh, ecological, uh, the environmentalists do not believe. And in fact, this figure uh, poses a lot of questions because if you take some uh, more independent uh, uh, estimates of the quantity of lithium in Serbia, and uh, I, I was watching at the figures uh, coming from the uh, US government, who has an evaluation of the quantity of lithium in the world. They uh, think that there is only 1.8% of uh, world lithium in Serbia, which is far from this 10% that has been claimed by Rio Tinto. So no one really knows what is the real value of this project. Is it really was worth $2.4 billion, as Rio Tinto says? Because on another hand, uh, the population say that the area where the mine should be be dig is a very agricultural area which produces milk, which produces food, and this has a value too. And those, uh, all these productions, uh, agricultural production, could be destroyed by the mine, and this would be a loss for Serbia. So no one really knows uh, what is uh, the benefit or what could lose uh, Serbia uh, in that gambit. So still lots of question marks 
over this entire project, Laurent. And for the Serbian government as well, with the elections coming up, there are more questions to be asked. Well, uh, definitely uh, the electoral agenda uh, is uh, very important in all these protests and in the reaction of the government. Uh, at the beginning, the president of Serbia uh, was very much uh, against uh, listening to the street. But after the government changed its mind, uh, so we're going to listen to uh, some quotes uh, of the highest official of Serbia. I wouldn't even think of listening to the street and serving street thugs. I serve the people and the citizens of Serbia. I think it is a decision for the future, and I believe it would be smarter and better if it is brought by the political elites that would make up the new parliament and who will be the core of the government for the next four years. So, definitely, the government has listened to the streets, uh, apparently because they wanted to remove the demonstrators from the street. They are not sure to uh, win the next uh, election, general election, which will be held in April. And uh, President Vucic did not want to have a big demonstration in the streets ahead of the scrutiny. Uh, but uh, the question remains whether the government is sincere or not, if they are re-elected, will they keep their word or will they bring back uh, Rio Tinto's project, which is the biggest fear of the uh, protesters, the environmental protesters? So we'll see after April what happens with uh, this Rio Tinto's project in Serbia. Laurent Rui, thank you very much indeed. Laurent Rui, our reporter there. You can, of course, see his report again via the website france24.com. This is Reporters on France 24. Stay with us. Most of all, stay safe.